Columbus NAIC top eight as a senior, and then Hartford Regional had a, essentially didn't play that previous round. Yes. Got straight into top eight. So if anyone's wondering why we said both, that's the reason we've said both. If you do look at the prizes there, Michael has prized the Squawker Billy, a fantastic card to use in your turn one and one copy of Reggie Drago. And then Jesse has prized that one copy of Iron Bundle. So a couple one of the prizes for both players, but I think it's safe to say, Ross, nothing, you know, um, game breaking there. Not game breaking, but I don't like having free energy prized if I'm Jesse. The more energy you've got prized, the lower percentage chance you have of hitting especially double energy off of your electric generator. And frankly, I want to. Jesse, we've heard, has been hitting very well of electric generator, been drawing very well throughout the tournament, as Maridon often does. So having a bunch of energy prize can be a little bit of a pain. But it does look like the players are getting ready to go here. We see a handshake, and we are off with our final top eight game of the 2024 Pokemon World Championships. And it looks like we see Michael going first here, and we know that Maridon can have some fun going second. It really, really can, but Reggie Drago needs to go first, and Michael is going to kick us off here in our top 8B feature match. Has led his Mew EX, that restart ability, the genome hacking attack. Jesse Parker has led a Maridon EX, that tandem unit ability, and that photon blaster attack. Michael Davison is currently concluding that nest what's being played. They're going to allow him to grab a basic Pokemon, in this case, Reggie Drago, and pop it straight on the bench. Yeah, Reggie Drago, of course, you need that nice and early. And you said about Reggie Drago going first, you're right. It's not a basic deck. It's, a, it's an evolution deck. You need to get your Reggie Drago V and evolve it into Reggie Drago V star in order to actually make it work. It's turn one, you don't have a good turn one if you're Michael. That's something that Jesse is going to be looking to really try and take advantage of. Let's make sure that I can get a very good start. I want to get ahead on prizes before you've even got rolling here. So turn one for Jesse, going to be very important. Michael here, playing an Ultra Ball, just trying to essentially set up. You've got two Red to Drago V here already. That's a pretty gosh darn good start. And Mew in the active, hey, nice bit of rebooting. Yeah, it's Get got some, or restarting, sorry. Get some extra cards, why not? Yeah, and it's got a free retreat cost as well. Uh, but worth noting though, all these uh, Pokemon that Michael has put down, they are two prize Pokemon, obviously. And they all have under 220 hit points. So that means Photon Blaster is currently very live here for Jesse, as I'm sure he knows that um, taking these two prize cards early, as early as your first turn of the game, might I say, could really put the pressure on in this top eight feature match. Yeah, and Jesse has been feasting on Reggie Drago a little bit throughout this tournament, and this is one of the reasons why it ends up being possible. Because you go, well, you basically get the first attack against Reggie Drago. If you go first, they have a turn where they're not really rolling, and then you get the first attack. If they go first, you go second, and you get the first attack. Either way, if you can have a good turn one, it can work. And Michael puts that Red to Drago in the active, knowing that a good turn from Jesse here will leave it in the discard pile, and Jesse up by two prizes. So it looks like Jesse is going to have his first turn here, going to activate that tandem unit ability, one of the best abilities in the game. Letting you search your deck for two basic lightning Pokemon and pop them straight onto your bench. Looks like Jesse is going to do a little bit of a prize card check here, going to work out what is available to him. And yet, we'll just play a copy of Blood Moon Earth Luna, worth keeping an eye on that. But nothing, as we said, the prizes there were just on the left, nothing too impactful. No, but I'm, I'm looking at Jesse here, right? Okay. And I'm seeing that we've got a bunch of energy in the prizes, which is not ideal. Three in the prizes, right? Yes. And I'm also looking, and I'm seeing, I think there were four energy in hand. Yeah, there That's was quite seven out of 16 energy which aren't in the deck. You know what that means? That means that actually, when you play those electric generator, you know, you're expecting to have 13, 14 energy in the deck. You've got nine. That is lowering the odds quite a lot here. So, yeah, there's seven energy unavailable in the deck right now for Jesse. That is going to hurt. And we're going to see an Arvin. Yep. Traditionally, you go for electric generator here. But yep. the odds are against you a little bit. The odds are, that is a fantastic point, actually, as we are going to see that tandem unit concluding. You're going to grab the Raikou and the Maraidon as well. But we do see this Arvin being played. Now, you're right, we could be seeing an electric generator being grabbed here just to try and keep up the tempo. We do see a Prime Catcher in Jesse's hand there, worth noting. And we do see the Forest Seal Stone currently in the hand here as well. So let's see what Jesse 
does target here. Looks like we are going to be riding the electric generator train still, though, with that rescue board that will give the Pokemon attached to one less retreat cost. Worth noting, Rylan does have a one retreat cost, so that will retreat for free if there's a rescue board attached. But I tell you what, though, if this electric generator hits two, we just attach one for turn, we attach the rescue board, retreat, and boom, that's going to be two prize cards for Jesse straight away. It is, and the day I see him ride on player, player, turn one, Arvin, and not get an electric generator, yeah. I mean, I don't even want to think about that. It is unconscionable. That's what you do with Maridon. Oh, and here we go, Ross. The electric generator is going to be played. Two energy. There we go. Cross of the hands. Oh, just the one. Oh, no, see, I see the, there's so much energy not in the deck. I don't think one's a bad result here. It's not. It's Getting not. two with nine energy in the deck would honestly be, that is well above odds. Getting one is a decent shout. Now, we do see the Forest Hill Stone in the hand. So if Jesse really wants to... Uh, could attach the Forest Stone to search for another one, but it looks like it's going to attach to the Raikou there. So that means that the, the turn one Photon Blaster probably isn't going to happen now. Yeah, and the, you saw the decision there from, uh, from Jesse, just thinking, where do I put this energy? Raikou is a two energy attacker. That is why you put it on there, so you can attach and you've got the attack rolling. Maridon takes a third energy, and you could Forest Seal Stone for an electric generator, but even... The, but, Jesse's seen that there's energy prized. They, they've been able to search the deck. They know there's energy in hand. They know they're pushing their luck a little bit here. So has to go a slower route. And this is not what Jesse's looking for. With this matchup for Jesse, the deal is very simple. Turn one KO on Red to Drago V because the V star has too much HP. It's got 280. You don't want to deal with it. No. The good news is you can hit with your Raikou here and then finish off next turn. But that gives Michael the opportunity to knock out your Ico, and then they're ahead two prizes. So it looks like we saw the Star Alchemy being used, going to grab the Squawker Billy. Prime Catcher into the Mew. That's going to get the Squawker Billy in the active, as it has got the rescue board attached. We're going to see a manual attachment there to the Raikou, and it looks like we're going to see a Squawk and Seize, I would imagine. Now, it's going to be a lot of energy hitting the discard pile, but it's going to have to, that's just the way it's going to be. So Squawk and Seize, discard your hand to draw six. Let's see what Jesse will find. And this is not a deck that plays from the discard pile. We've got Forest Seal, Stone, Blood Moon, Ursaluna, Zapdos. This is not a deck that plays a bunch of Super Rod or attaches from the discard like those old Flaffy versions. This is a deck that plays a bunch of energy and hopes you don't have to discard a bunch early while having a bunch of prize. That is a real, a real downside to where Jesse is in this game. That is the big story as to why Jesse's not having that explosive start that they're so used to in this tournament. So you can attack with Raikou. There's how many bench Pokemon we got here? Six in total. Yep. So that would be 140. It's not terrible damage. And it does. Oh, oh. Do you feel your bench? You can KO Mew here. Yeah, it has got You don't the... need a full bench to KO Mew for your opponent, I mean. Yeah, it has got the, um, the Zapdos as well. That would boost basic lightning type damage. You could put that in play as well, just to bolster the lightning rondo. We do see a town store being played. And uh, that's going to grab a Bravery Charm. I'm going to boost the basic Pokemon's uh, HP by 50. It's attached to. But yeah, I mean, it's still going to be. We are looking at potential two prize KO. It's not the Photon Blaster, but it might just be enough to get the job done. No, it should be. Now, we need a full bench, though. As it is, we're only hitting 140. Here is a Fleet Footed to draw an extra card. If Jesse can fill his bench, Ooh. there is a Pheasant Dippity. You can bench the Blood Moon Ursa Luna. You get the KO, but it's not the bench Pokemon you want. You are bench locking yourself here. But is it worth it for the KO? Jesse says yes. Lightning Rondo is going to hit exactly 180. And the way the Ryko Mass works here, Shay, you add up all the bench Pokemon, add one, times it by 20, boom. That's where you go. That's you how the math works. There you go. Some quick math there from Ross. Love to see it. So Jesse's done what he needed to do. Get a turn one, two prize KO. Oh, that's Celestial Roar for Michael. That's not what we really need to see. Discard top three cards of your deck and you can attach any energy. That hand is horrendous, Shay. That hand is very, very bad. So I think it's Jesse's turn here. So let's see what Jesse opts to do. I would love to. I've not seen a Celestial Roar on Roger Drago for no. so long. Let's just discard the top three cards of your deck and if any energy you can attach them, it's not what you're looking for. So it looks like we are over at Jesse's side of the board here. Looks like, I think that concluding a town store search, I believe. And let's see what Jesse, you have, if you're Jesse Parker right now, you're also thinking, right, 
if we can get the um, the photon blaster up here, that would be immense pressure. Yeah, a photon blaster would make such a huge difference here. Here's a fleet footed drawing a card. It was a Luminian, but there's no bench space to play it. You did bench lock yourself on the previous turn to get that KO, which I still I kind of like that. We see an energy on the Maridon. There's no. Is there any draw ups? Oh, Professor's oh, wow. research. Now we do see one more energy hit in the discard. That is eight. No. Oh, yeah. No. No. There's no. It's still only seven that are unavailable because that energy in the one you attached, they both came from the prizes. So there's nine energy, I think, that have been essentially drawn or played here. Now that you've got one in hand. So electric generator, you're getting through your deck now. Your odds are going up a little bit. It's not perfect. But did we draw an electric generator? We did not. So I think we just saw a lightning rondo there for the, what's that, 160 damage. And back over to Michael. Again, that hand, I didn't see what the top deck was, but I don't think it was particularly great. I want to see a super up being played here. Going to shuffle in Fez and Dippity. Uh, was that Giratina a V-Star? And then uh, a Reggie Drago V-Star as well, I believe, getting shuffled back in. But yeah, I, I need to see what Michael's top deck was, but because we saw the turn before, we didn't see any cards being played. It was your Celestial War, and then back over to Jesse. So let's see what Michael does. No, the hand was like super rolled on a couple of Dragon Pokemon that you want to get in the discard to copy with Red Dragon V Star. There was, there was basically nothing there. It's not an ideal situation at all. Now it does look like we got an Arvin. Is Jesse playing an Arvin I think, here? Was that just Superrod and Pass for Michael? I think it I was. Think it was. So now we're back pass. over to Jesse's side of the board. It looked like it was concluding a town store there by shuffling the deck. And oh my goodness, Jesse, like, Michael, if you are Jesse, I'm just thinking, I'm getting all the turns in the world. And Jesse is going to go up four prizes here. That KO is on the board. Jesse needs to do nothing this turn to get the KO with Raikou. So what you're really trying to do here, set up that Maridon, and then at some point, any gusting onto a Teal Mask Ogapon, and that's the game. We see an Ultra Ball here. We're just thinning the deck a little bit. There's no bent space available. But if you thin the deck, then Electric Generator. The, the rule is very simple. The more lightning energy you have in your deck, the better chance of hitting. Yep. The fewer other cards you have in your deck, the better chance of hitting your lightning energy off your Electric Generator. So search out that Mew. You can't play it yet, but there's one less card in your deck. Here comes Electric Generator. We're trying to power up that Maridon, not for this turn, but for next turn. What do we get? We got one. one. Hit. That's not bad. We'll take a one. I think there's a basic energy in hand as well, right? Yeah, so next yep. turn, you just attach Gust Game. I think Jesse is in for game one here quite nicely. There's no real reason for Michael to concede. We've got a long time limit on these games. We've got over an hour remaining. So there's no reason for Michael to concede super early here like there might be in Swiss. But I do think this game is as good as done at this point. There's the attachment for the turn. We're going to see the KO with Raikou's Lightning Rondo. We're going to see it's fleet footed okay. first. It's fleet footed just to draw an extra card. Love to see that. Lightning. Now we get it. Lightning Rondo for the KO. Like Raikou has taken. Oh, does top deck a professor's research there though for Michael? So we won't be able to start getting back in this game. That's one card that we'd love to see. Going to draw seven new cards and discard the hand. We need to see some energy search. We, I mean, energy search. We need to see some basic energy at the very least. Earth and Vessel Ross, that's one step of the puzzle. Yeah, and you get the Dragapult in the discard pile, which, of course, you want your Dragon Pokemon in the discard so that you can copy their attacks using Regidrago Drago here. So that is an important part of the puzzle. So that's a nice start. And you're going to get yourself some basic energy with the Earthen Vessel as well, which is lovely. And then you can, the problem is you've got no energy on the board. So you need an attachment, and then you need your energy on the Teal Mask, then a second Teal Mask attached to that, double energy switch, V-Star, and then you can only be down by two prizes. Yep. I mean, that is the That's line. The goal. That is the line. It's asking for a lot, but that is what Michael, we need to start piecing together if we want to try and stay in this game. We do see... Teal Mask activation there, or uh, Teal Dance, I should say, after concluding both those earthen vessels. We do see energy switching. There's a concession there for Michael. Jesse Parker's currently one game up here in our Masters Top 8B feature match. Michael wasn't really able to get in the game, but Jesse capitalized and is currently one game away from being in top four. And there's going to be a huge sigh of relief from Jesse there. Jesse's tech did not do what it was supposed to do that game. We had four energy in the opening hand, three energy prize. That locked Jesse out of almost half his energy, basically, from being able to be hit with Electric Generator. We saw the Lightning Rondo from 
your Raikou early, which was not ideal, but at least you got it onto a Mew. Getting it onto the Mew was a very big deal, yep. being able to get that KO. And then, yes, he had a bit of a slow game, a bit of an awkward game, but when your opponent's doing nothing, that is absolutely enough. And that's the thing. If I'm Michael, I'm thinking, hang on a second, my opponent did not have a great game there. I just had an even worse game. So let's head over to the replay here, remind ourselves how it happened, and here was the big turn one lightning rondo. Yeah, super impactful here for Jess. Like you said, didn't really have the best of resources available, but knew that his route to victory would be taking a two-five turn one KO and had to go about it a sort of long-winded way, but it got there nonetheless. And that Riker was just saying, well, if you're not going to do anything, Michael, I'm just going to lightning rondo again, lightning rondo again. And then that was pretty much all she wrote. Michael did have one turn to try and piece together a comeback, but unfortunately wasn't able to and just, well, that was all she wrote. Uh, picked all the cards up, just have a nice, uh, quick, game one then Jesse big sigh of relief and make no mistake about it even though Michael didn't really piece together a lot like you said Jesse didn't have the greatest of resources to work with but still had to close the door there on that game one and did exactly that yeah did a good job there doing what you needed to do and both players are gonna be and that's the thing you know Jesse had a pretty convincing game one victory both players are gonna be looking for a better start going into game two both players are gonna look for their deck to cooperate a little bit more. For Michael, get your Red Dragon V Star, get your 280 HP Pokemon. They are high HP, they are harder for Jesse to deal with. And we know Jesse has beaten a bunch of Red Dragon this weekend. It's a matchup that he's pretty confident with. He's already one game up, but there is a route here for Michael to take a bunch of prizes, you know, maybe get some, you know, Kyurem. There's a lot of Pokemon that are 220 or less in Jesse's deck. So you can double Kyurem, and you can actually get a six yep. price turn with a double Kyurem attack. It's a possibility. It is a possibility here, and it looks like Michael will let Jesse go first. Worth noting, Michael's prize cards, two copies of Ogapon EX, two of Ogapon EX, but that Prime Catcher as well currently in the prizes. For Jesse, again, those basic energy centers, I want no part of this, and they're currently in the prize cards, as well as one copy of Rescue Board, which is his only copy, actually. So we saw that being utilized in game one. That's currently not an option for Jesse. And Greninja is in the active. It is not yeah. a Pokemon you want in the active. Not being able to retreat is going to be a pain. There are some switch cards in the deck, though. For Michael, he only plays three Teal Mask Ogapop. And you really want two on the board, yeah. so you can Teal Dance, Teal Dance, double energy switch, get your Red Drago going in a single turn. That is going to be a little bit awkward for Michael, because he's only going to be able to get two energy on the board per turn. That is not enough to power up a Red Drago. It means every turn's energy attachment is going to be a little more important. Yep, those energy attachments are going to be crucial as it looks like Jesse here is concluding in quite a an Ultra Ball by the looks of it. Going to grab that Maridon EX, and also going to activate that Tandem unit to grab two Lightning types and pop them on the bench. And going to do a little prize check, a prize card search as well. Yeah, he's going to find out that for the second game in a row, there are free energy prizes. And look, when you're playing 16 energy in a 60 card deck, you do expect some to be prized. Let, let's yeah. be honest. About a quarter of your deck is energy, so you would expect one and a half prize per game. Having three prize two games in a row, that's above odds. It really is, but you know, managed to get away with it in game one. So let's see if we can get away with it again. You know, currently sitting at undefeated record. It's like Blood Moon Earth is gonna get benched as well as a squawker Billy. We're gonna see those squawk and seize here. We are. I've not actually had a chance to consult Jesse's hand here. Let's have a little gander what he's working with. Arvin and switch card, not the most you know, explosive a card. So I wonder if Jesse's going to try and get some energy on the board of electric generators. Let's see if Squawker Billy gave him any. The answer is no. But we do see a Forest Hill Stone, though. Yeah, but there's no way to get out the active now. Your only rescue board is prized. You've gotten rid of one switch cart. Oh, side note, the second switch cart is prized. Oh, goodness. So, uh, yeah, I think the only switching left in Jesse's deck right now is Prime Catcher. Because there's two switch cart, one in the discard, one in the prizes. One rescue board in the prizes. Yeah, I think you have to manually retreat that Greninja or play Prime Catcher. I think that's literally the only ways to get it out the active. Less than ideal, Shay. No, you're right. Less than ideal, but at least Greninja does have a one retreat cast. It's not like trying to maneuver something huge out the way. But you're right, energy don't really want to be attached to Greninja if possible. But you're right, you know, that Squawker Billy getting rid of the switch cart. That's all she wrote for that. As that um, was like Town Store is going to grab a Bravery Charm there. Not sure where that's, where that's going to get attached to this turn. If not, but if it does... 
basic Pokemon is attached to, we'll get 50 extra HP. Yeah, 50 extra HP is quite nice. Give a little more survivability to those Pokemon. It can take a Blood Moon Ursa Luna out of range of a Lost Impact, for instance. Yeah. So there are, there are some the things you can do there to play around with the maths a little bit. So, what have we got coming down here? We've got the Bravery Charm on the Maridon. Puts it up to 270. We've got an energy onto that Maridon as well. And it looks like a pass. That is not the explosive turn that we generally wanted there. But remember, that's turn one. Yes. Michael has a turn, doesn't attack. It's next turn that Jesse needs the big explosive turn. There is still plenty of time left to pull it off. As we do see, Mark's going to kick his turn off there with an Earth and Vessel. Gonna discard that Hisuian Gudra V Star. Love to get that in the discard pile nice and early. That rolling iron can be copied obviously via that Apex Dragon. And that rolling iron will do 200 damage and reduce damage done to itself by 80 next turn. Yeah, that's always going to be fun. Give yourself that extra survivability. 280 damage is not really what Maridon loves hitting. 220, that's the magic number. That's what Maridon's really going for. That's what you get with your Raikou. That's what you get with Maridon. Zapdos puts it up to 230. Getting up to 280. Yeah, that's, that's a little bit more of an ask. So you're trying to avoid the Red Drago V-Star as much as possible. It's why these early KOs become so important. And then you gust around a little bit. Maybe take out one V-Star and that's your route to victory. There's your prize map. So it looks like we're going to see an Ultra Ball going to grab the Squawker Billy. And it looks like Michael is going to be using Town Store. I don't think actually players any tool cards. Just using that to consult resources and see what he has available to him. But that Squawker Billy has been taken off the Ultra Ball. That was discarding a Reggie Drago V-Star and a basic grass energy. So it's like Squawk and Billy all over the place here for both players. We might see that Squawk and Seize letting Michael discard his hand to draw six as it's the first turn of the game. A fantastic card for getting, you know, just getting set up. And worth noting that Motivate can be used and often is in the Reggie Drago decks, letting you accelerate two basic energy from your discard parts when you bench Pokemon. Yeah, it's not too bad at all. Just a reminder there that Squawk and Billy has been used. And it's kind of cheeky using your opponent's town store, but it's a really good thing to do. If you haven't had a chance to check your prizes, well, here's your chance to check your prizes. Here comes the only Teal Mask Ogapon available in the deck with an energy attached to it. Draw a card, there's an energy switch, that's good. Problem is, there's only one Red Drago. Yes. And you don't really want to start using energy switch to pile it up with energy and then see it get KO'd next turn. Yeah, but I think there's no other way. So I think it's like Earth and Vest is going to discard that Dragapult. Yeah, I'd love to see that. And it's going to grab, it looks like, a basic fire and a basic grass. I think if you're a marker, all you can do here is attach that fire and just hope that your Raji Drago V can survive. That's all you can do at this point. It must be a horrible place to be, but all you can do is cross your fingers. You can see the expression on his face as he's shuffling up. That Raji Drago V has to survive to give Marco a best chance of staying in this game. The good news is Jesse is going to really struggle to get this Greninja out of the active spot. That is at yes. least one saving grace. So we're looking for potentially a double electric generator hit onto the Maridon so you can manually attach the retreat or maybe using your prime catcher to take out, say, yep. that Teal Mask Ogapon. That would also work. You get Squawkability, but I like saving Squawkability for a bit later. Yeah, worth noting, if he does use prime catcher into that Teal Mask Ogapon, that would be Michael's only one until Super Odd. Uh, would get played. Town Store did conclude there. Didn't quite manage to see what it was, unfortunately, but it looks like we are going to see an Arvin being played here as well. Now, this is going to give us some insight. I'm worth that Jesse still does have Star Alchemy available, so um, Arvin can grab a tool card and an item, and the Star Alchemy can grab any card Jesse likes. So there's a ton of search power here, and I'd love to see how he plays this turn out. Yeah, I do feel like we might be seeing an electric generator because it's early turns and Maridon always goes for electric generator on early turns. It's what it does. And not, oh, actually not looking for a tool there. So I don't know if there's any really... I don't available. think there's any left after these town no. store activations and with the escape board, um, the escape board, sorry, the rescue board in the prizes. Might not have any option. So here we go, electric generator. Let's see how this pans out. Top five cards. Remember, you can attach up to two lightning energy you find there, but they have to be in the top five. Little cross up. The oh, there's two there, Ross. That'll do very nicely indeed. And here's the thing. Oh. Now you can manually attach to Greninja if you've got an energy. You can manually attach to Retreat. 
and get it out the active. I don't know if I saw an energy in Jesse's hand, though. But it looks like he's using Star Alchemy to go fetch it. Could just be a basic energy. Could grab the Prime Catcher. I think probably just want to grab the energy. I don't. You really want to try and remove that uh, Reggie Drago V if you can. Could use a could use a double turbo energy if you like. Uh, that would work. Can grab any card you like here, Jesse. This is a fantastic place to be. No, this is lovely. That's why we play Star Alchemy. It lets you go and search for any card you like. And it looks like it was that double turbo energy. And let's face it, it just had to be something to get Greninja out the active. Yep. If you want to go after your Teal Mask Ogapom, well, then you go and get your Prime Catcher. If you want the active, and very important, Double Turbo is the correct call here. Yep. Because it can't be accelerated of Electric Generator. And so by using this, you're not lowering your odds of future Electric Generator. Sorry, Shay. Yes, I was about to say, but it looks like we are going to see this Photon Blaster KO here. And that is devastating for Michael. No Reggie Drago V in play. Looks like it doesn't play the copy of Thornton, so that won't be an option either. So Michael, if he's going to attack this turn, well, we're going to have to be a Leaf Myriad Shower. Yeah, Leaf Myriad Shower we've seen can work. We've seen it KO Maridon on stream this weekend, but it only works with many Teal Mask Ogre Bombs. Yes. Because I believe, oh, what we're we looking at? Four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, you need four energy onto a Teal Mask Ogre Bomb to do 240 and get the KO. And right now, there is how much energy is actually on it at the moment? One. Yeah. So you can attach the turn, and you can Teal Dance, yep. and you're still one energy short. Worth noting, it has a Bravery Charm attached as well, so it's currently at 270 HP. So we are going to say that Teal Dance activation, going to draw a card there and attach the energy. I think it's Professor's Choro scenario. Oh, goodness gracious me, that is not that the is hand you terrible want. Terrible hand. Oh, no. Michael Davidson, do you, is there a way to navigate out of this? Only has two prize Pokemon in play as well. Worth noting, Photon Blaster, but you do have to maneuver your Maraidon if you do want to attack next turn. But yeah, looks like you're going to see an energy switch onto the Squawker Billy. Presses Choro scenario, going to see what? And then bench the Teal Mask Ogre Pond and use Motivate. Oh, Teal Mask again. Teal just Dance, I should say. Just to draw an extra card. See one more card. Oh, the Fire Energy. No. The hand is Drago V Star, two Fire Energy. There are no real relevant attacking options on the board and you're using Squawkabilly to build up your Teal Mask Ogre Pond that is not even your main attacker and it's not going to take much for Jesse to KO this Squawkabilly go up by four prizes and get into a phenomenal position for potentially getting into top four. Oh and uh, we can see an electric generator off of concealed cards. Yeah it does still need to maneuver around to because Photon Blast you can't attack two turns uh, in a row. Does have electric generators could power up the Raikou. That is a possibility. Could even, yeah, could you, you can just retreat into the Raikou at this point. Like, it's not the most efficient use of your energy, but you can. You definitely can. We did see Ultra Ball here being played. Probably going to thin the deck a little bit. But yeah, goodness gracious me. Jesse has a whole multitude of ways. Oh, does have a bench slot open, actually. So could just grab Luminion, Boss's Orders, perhaps. Or Luminion for Arvin to grab Prime Catcher to reset as well. <laughs> so many, a myriad of options here for Jesse. Oh, uh, and now this turn, I adore Prime Catcher. Yeah. Prime Catcher onto that Teal Mask Ogapon. Get a two prize KO. Leave your opponent with just a Squawk ability. Get rid of their energy. Get rid of their only attacker. I think Prime Catcher at this stage would all but end the game. You would still need a pivoting option because there's no free yep. retreaters on Jesse's side of the board. But, you know, like a basic energy would deal with that. You'll be fine. Would be. Or could you could even use Electric Generator to attach the energy onto the Raikou? Does have basic energy in hand? Jesse, does have a few options here? Just opting, you know, trying to work out what is the most optimal. That's what we've got to do in these high-pressure scenarios. So Electric Generator is being played here. Look at top five. Attach up the two energy that you find there. A oh, triple hit Jesse again. Parker. Someone has to hook him up to the, elect uh, the electric grid. He's generating so much electricity right now. And that means that the Squawkabilly KO is on the board. You can, man you don't yeah. really like to, but you can manually retreat Maridon. Now, here comes Luminion. I love the idea here of using this to get an Arvin for a Prime Catcher to go and KO, or even just to boss his orders if you prefer. 
But then, no, because then you'd have to retreat. I think prime catcher. There we go. It is, as predicted, Armand wow. for prime catcher. This is going to take out the Teomas Gogoponche. It is going to leave Michael with just one squawk ability with one energy on the board. And I don't know if Michael can come back from that. And if you made me guess, I'd say probably not. I, I, and I'd have to agree with you. You're going to see Prime Catcher into the Tilmas Ogapon. Going to promote the Raikou. Going to get Fleet Footed to draw an extra card as well. Nest Ball was that. Now, yeah. I imagine we're just going to see a pay retreat throw on Blaster here. As Michael puts the hand down, there we go. We're going to see a pay retreat back into the throw on Blaster, which has been reset. So now that is an option for a big 220 damage. And that would be a huge KO here. And that would put Jesse down to two prize cards left in this top eight match. And let's not forget, Squawkabilly is a very, very easy two prizes for Jesse to take to finish out the game. Oh, Michael no! Michael Top takes an energy switch and concedes. And Jesse Parker is heading on with a still perfect record into the top four of the Pokemon trading card game World Championships. That's a pretty impressive thing, I think. Wow. What a top eight performance that was for Jesse.